welcome to entrepreneurship. Uh, this is actually being taped during the days of the coronavirus, but no one is in this room except I've got an intern back there in the control room, so I am not wearing a mask. Types of entrepreneurs. Here we begin our study guide. This includes mom and pop shops and local business owners. Small business can include partnerships, sole proprietors, and LLCs. Generally, it's any business that has less than 500 employees. You wouldn't think that 499 employees would be a small business, but according to the Small Business Administration, that classifies itself as a small business. Personally, I think of a small business as something that you just kind of run with your family. You might have another 10 or 12 employees, but basically that's the way it's categorized if you have up to 499 employees. That's the word, small business. You saw enough hints there. Partnership. Partnership can be you and another person say, hey, let's go into business together. You be the brains, I'll be the brawn, whatever it is. Frankly, for me, partnerships don't work out very well. There are very few partnerships in my life that I've seen, and I've known a lot of people in partnerships, uh, that stay friendly and successful for the lifetime of the partners. You know, let's say that the business is going to be two partners working for the next 50 years. I have not, I, I actually can't think of any one that I have seen that works that way. But if you do a partnership, make sure there's more than just your friends. Make sure that you have a contractual relationship and everyone knows what they're going to do and everyone carries their weight. Uh, partnerships can also be just spouses. I have a friend who has a sunglass retail business. They have the high-end sunglasses and his partner is his wife. They work together on it and they're doing very well. Uh, sole proprietors, that's the simplest form. You just go over to a city and you say I'm going to be a sole proprietor and they give you a business license. And it doesn't mean that you can't have employees, uh, but you don't really have any legal protection. You're not really that official as far as the law is concerned or the federal government. It's just you kind of doing your thing. I'm opening up a uh, an ice shaving shack, a snow cone shack or whatever. And it's going to be me and my family and we're all going to take turns running it and a couple of friends and I'm just doing something simple. But then if someone if someone gets sick from the snow cone they can come back and sue you and technically they can sue you and they can take your house, your personal property, your car, it affects your whole family. So a lot of people will vote for forming an LLC. That's what I usually do, a limited liability corporation, and it gives you some legal protection. Typically they can sue you, but not take your house or your car or your wife or your dog. They can sue the business and they have claim on the business assets. And that's probably more than you want to know about that. Moving on. This business could fit under the category of small business, but the primary factor in this case is that it's run from home. That's your hint there. As opposed to an office or other location. But just because a business is run from home doesn't mean it can't compete with larger businesses. In fact, many large corporations were started from a home, including Apple and Disney. Those are two of the biggest companies ever. Uh, Apple started with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak out of a garage and they started figuring out how they could build a home computer and it took off. Of course Walt Disney, you know, doing animations and things. Um, it wasn't very long before, as I recall from his story, that he and Ub Iwerks and who else were some of the starters. Anyway, and of course his brother Roy, uh, they did get a brick and mortar location but they started a home. The more important thing about a home-based business, that's what it is, is that uh, you are kind of independent of other things, including of pandemics. So a lot of people are working from home now, sometimes for a company and sometimes for themselves. Uh, the next one, internet-based business can be small, home-based, or even large corporations. The key difference here is that the business is operated primarily online. This includes companies like Amazon or other e-commerce businesses, bloggers, eBay, Etsy owners, and other business, any other business that does the majority of its business online. We have a student whose dad is selling things with his website and uh, 
partnership with Amazon. You can also have an e-commerce store, you can use Shopify to sell products, and you're doing it all online, typically from your home in your pajamas. For an inventor to be, that's your hint, for an inventor to be considered an entrepreneur, he needs to go beyond the idea stage to build the product and get it to market. A good example of inventors that transition to entrepreneurs are the contestants on Shark Tank. So if you have an idea for something that you think you can make that no one else has done, the, the old phrase is a way to build a better mousetrap, uh, then you are an inventor and then you want to get it to market and sell it so you become an entrepreneur. Let's watch an example of what I understand anyway is an inventor from Utah that created belts that have sold. Next into the tank is Nate Holtzapfel. That's right, next we're talking with Nate. Nate Holtzapfel. <laughs> Pleasure having you, Nate. Were you a natural salesman, do you think? Yeah. Nate is the most amazing salesperson ever. Everyone owns a belt, most people own a few. And in a thousand years, this everyday accessory has hardly ever changed. And some people might ask, why reinvent the wheel? At the Mission Belt Company, we've asked, why not? So we set on a mission to improve this everyday accessory. For starters, we removed all the holes. We've also employed our unique ratchet system to allow it to go together. You can hear the clicks as it goes together, feeds, slowly, and use a release lever on the bottom to take it apart. Brilliant guy came on the show and said that, listen, you know what? When I got off the plane in Hollywood, I stopped by 27 doors and I sold 25 belts. I know! That's a sales guy. That's, a, that's an entrepreneur. That's someone you want to do business with. That's a guy I'm dying to do business with. Wait, 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 wait. One of the first things you did when you get to Los Angeles. I check in, I went and sold 20 belts door to door. I love you, I love you. Uh, Nate Sosafel, so Hos, Hos, Hofa, Hosa. Sofa. It's Hunstaker, my last name's Hunstaker. <laughs> I knew I Nate was Nate Apple. All right, Nate. <laughs> He's Tell more us. excited about this than I am. He should be telling you about this. We don't need to hire a sales force. I am a sales force. We can go out and do this. I love What it. I need is I need to get the appointments with the right names and the right references. I can get in front of these places. Right now, I bat 1,000. Sometimes the stars align, you get a little lucky. Yeah, exactly. No, I think, I think it's a lot more than oh, luck. Oh, no, no, Way no. It's mostly luck. This is actually what I love. This is what I love doing. I love coming out here. I love talking to salespeople. I am a salesperson. Because of the internet and TV and everything, the way that's worked, we've come into a more cynical world, and people are expecting you to ask those things, and they're supposed to say, just looking, not interested. Uh, but if you uh, casually present yourself and allow the customers to ask you questions, and you genuinely care, that's what it's about. It's genuinely caring about your customer. You cannot be looking at their wallet. You cannot be thinking about that. Every customer I've ever had, I genuinely care about and want to make happy. You love what you do? I love what I do. I've always liked my job. I even liked it when I sold cars. I love selling things and I love being around people. And when you love what you do, you will be successful. You're selling, you are basically selling all day long. Aren't <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> You're great. You're a hero. It's very innovative. I like it a lot. Damon, I'd be crazy to not want a partner like you. I accept 100%. My man. Wow. My man. Done. That's a deal. That is a deal. What a dream come Thank true you. for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Many entrepreneurs get the most joy out of starting and building a business, but not in its continued management. So they sell it to launch a new idea. They are still considered entrepreneurs because they operate and assume risk in the business for the time they own it. Other times, serial entrepreneurs juggle several businesses at once, earning multiple streams of income. Several, maybe, <laughs> but probably most serial entrepreneurs are more interested in just a few and they're interested in, in their ideas and seeing the success of their ideas. They're also similar to people that are creative types. Um, they like to write stories or they like to paint and they like to see their work get out into the market. There's a, there's a feeling that like releases the endorphins and they feel joy in taking an idea to market. And then they move on. Uh, that happens to be me. I don't want to keep showing up every day for the next 50 years, managing the employees, managing the manufacturing, all the day-to-day -day work, all the accounting, all the meetings. I'm more interested in creating an idea and getting it to market. And then if someone comes and offers me a million bucks for it, I say, here, it's yours. Thanks for the money. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to launch a new idea. Okay, what are the characteristics of a successful entrepreneur? 
So some people have it and some people don't. You might be able to develop those traits, but there are some people who would just never want to be an entre entrepreneur. They're afraid of risk. They're afraid of trying to think of some idea, of trying to make it into a business. Here it says, some business experts suggest that the entrepreneurial drive is innate. I think it says that you're born with it, that it's a trait acquired at birth. So you've heard the phrase, I am just, I was just born that way. So are, are you born an entrepreneur? Or is it like it says, while others believe that anyone can become an entrepreneur? I actually believe the latter to an extent. I believe that almost anyone can have an idea that they wished was out there that they could have, like a product or a service, and they think, gosh, you know, like if you're in a traffic jam, I wish there was a faster way to get to work. Everybody thinks of that, a better way to get to school, a better way to take classes at school. You know, everyone had a, a, a better school lunch. Everyone has a, an idea that there should be something better. Then the question is, do they have the traits to actually make that idea happen? So here it says, whether a person is born to it or develops it, there are characteristics or traits required for successful entrepreneurship, including Talk to successful entrepreneurs and you'll nearly always hear the word passion when they describe what they do. Following your passion is one of the best predictors of success. So do you have a passion to figure out how to have a better school lunch? Or are you just a complainer? Do you actually have passion for making school lunch better? And if you do, you'll find a way to make it happen if you have enough passion. Entrepreneurs often think outside the box and aren't swayed by others who might question their ideas. Another way of saying that is you're going to be around people who are naysayers. They won't believe in you or your idea. They'll say, ah, that'll never work. Entrepreneurs hear that all the time. But they are not dependent on others. Therefore, they are independent thinkers. So are you a person that can think independently? Or do you just follow the crowd? It's difficult to succeed at anything if you don't believe in a good outcome. Entrepreneurs are dreamers and believe their ideas are possible even when they seem unattainable. Are you optimistic or pessimistic? You probably can be both, but about your dream, about your product, about your entrepreneurial idea, you need to be optimistic. Optimism. This is not to say entrepreneurs never have self-doubt, but they're able to overcome it and believe they can achieve their goal. So are you ever going to doubt that you can pull something off? Are you ever going to doubt that you can get an A out of a class? I'll never pass that test. Yeah, you're going to have doubts. But if you have self-confidence, then you can say, I will do it. I will find a way. You know, it may be hard, but I'll find a way. And I think that, yeah, that comes up again here. Lack of assets, knowledge, and resources are common, but entrepreneurs are able to get what they need or figure out how to use what they've got in order to reach their business goals. They never let problems or challenges get in the way and instead find ways to achieve success despite hardships. I've got a great idea, and there's never going to be any hardships or problems or bumps in the road. It's going to be great, and I'm going to make millions. Good luck with that, Pollyanna. You're going to need to be resourceful, and you're going to need to be a problem solver. That's actually the way they train Marines. Probably most Marine sergeants would say, I don't really care how strong you are, how fast you can run, how well you can swim. Can you achieve the mission? Are you going to overcome the problems? Are you resourceful? Are you going to adapt to your situation and still achieve the mission? This is very similar. Entrepreneurs don't quit at the first, second, or even hundredth obstacle. For them, failure is not an option. Right out of Apollo 13. Failure is not an option. So they continue to work toward success even when things go wrong. That's tenacity, that's spelled T-E-N-A city, C-I-T-Y. Tenacity is the determination, the grit to just keep going on. If you're a marathon runner, 
and uh, you get a side cramp and it's mile 24, do you have the tenacity to still finish? Some of the more stringent definitions of entrepreneurship include vision as a necessary element. It helps to know your end goal when you start. Further, vision is the fuel that propels you forward toward your goal. We're going to have you do vision statements on your company, business, product, service. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have vision, don't do it. Vision and passion are probably my two top ones. I would have to say that you must have in order to be successful as an entrepreneur because you will have problems. So do you have the vision of what your idea is going to look like? And it might change, but what is it going to look like in a year, in two years? What do you think is going to happen? Steve Jobs said everyone will have a home computer. That was so crazy. I think he said something like it'll be a, a household appliance. Um, I'm sure with the vision of smartphones, everyone's going to have a computer in their phone. Like, what? You know, you're going to carry around a phone? Believe it or not, we used to have a phone that was on the wall, tethered by a cable, and that was your phone. And when you were away from that phone, if you were out in the yard, if you were out in the car, you didn't have a phone. Well, someone had a vision to put a phone in everyone's hand, and now we spend at least two hours a day on our phones. 14 says it's easy in this fast-paced, constant, info-in-your-face world to get distracted. Boy, did I just say it. What is that thing that you're always looking at? I think if an alien came to scout out our world and reported back to the mothership, these earthlings, they're going to be easy to take over because they have this mind control device. Everywhere they go, they're staring into this black screen. All we have to do is take control of the mind control device and we'll have control of them, which is pretty close to what Google is doing. So we get distracted easily uh, or bogged down in unimportant busy work. Successful entrepreneurs are focused on what will bring results. So let's talk about focus for a second here. There was a survey done, a person interviewed, I can't remember who it was, but he interviewed a lot of the top businessmen, the most successful businessmen, the richest guys in the world, the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffetts. And after he interviewed about 10 of them and asked the same question, he realized he was on to something. What question do you think he asked them? Very simple. Why are you a success? What is the biggest key you would say to your success? And independently, like in their different offices, they weren't all sitting at a table together independently in different interviews they all came up with the same answer what are the chances of that focus they all say deep concentrated focus and most of them their habit is to uh, you know maybe they hit the gym in the morning or maybe they uh, well they shower they get dressed maybe they eat breakfast but that's about it they all say the morning hours are the most productive and they just focus they don't want distractions they focus until noon and then they'll go and react to the fires and things like that they have to put out so another story about this deep focus and I think it's from success magazines owner uh, Darren Hardy pretty sure this is where I heard the story I heard it a number of years ago so you probably shouldn't quote me on this uh, but I'm not gonna be uh, I'm going to be a little bit lazy here and not research. I'm not going to stop right now. My understanding is they had a conference for everyone that was invited to come that you know was a subscriber to Success Magazine or any entrepreneur. And I think it was in New York. And he and his staff were saying, let's get a really good keynote speaker for the conference. And let's say it costs 100 bucks to come to the conference, right? So it's kind of a big deal. It's probably more like 1000 bucks. They found, a, they found out that Sir Richard Branson, I believe is who it was, was in town. Because, uh, you know, he's British, and I believe he was in New York, as the story goes. And this is probably a 15-year-old story. And Richard Branson is the multimillionaire, billionaire, actually, he would have to be with Virgin Airlines, the, all the Virgin labels. Virgin Media, I can't remember what all they are. And he's in town, and so they go, this is great. This is good luck, good fortune. He'll be in town, let's say it's three weeks from today, and uh, let's, let's get him to be our keynote speaker. So they call him up, they get his people, and they say, we'd like him to be the keynote speaker. 
and the people say, I'm sorry, he's working on a project, um, he won't be able to do it. And they go, that's too bad. And they go, well, uh, yeah, we'll pay you. And so as the story goes, Darren Hardy and his staff offer him, I think it was $100,000 for one hour, right? To come be the keynote speaker. Let's say it's on a Thursday morning. Come 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. We'll pay you $100,000. And of course, all the people that know that he's going to be the keynote speaker, that's a big plus for Success Magazine. But it's also publicity for Richard Branson speaking to all these people. And his stock would go up. So would you? For $100,000, I mean, I do it for $100, but for $100,000, would you go speak for an hour? Well, his people got back to uh, Darren Hardy of Success Magazine and the staff and said, we're really sorry, but he still said no. He really can't be pulled off the project he's on. So Darren Hardy and the staff, they're just, you know, they're discouraged. And they're like, wow. And Darren Hardy says, you know what? Let's just take it all the way up. Let's offer him one million dollars for one hour of his time. I think he was thinking, I just want to know. I just want to know if he'll do it for a million dollars. And so they, they contact uh, Richard Branson and his people go and talk to him and they get back. I think it was a little longer as the story goes, like it wasn't immediately, it was like a couple hours later. And they said, Richard Branson sincerely apologizes, but he is really deep focusing on this project and is not allowing any distractions at any price. Now that's focus. If you won't take an hour of your time for a million bucks. You might say, well, he was going to earn millions and millions by taking the time. That's probably true. But really what it is, is when you're that deep focused, you will get results. Last one, entrepreneurs don't expect something from nothing and they don't wait for things to happen. They are doers. They overcome challenges and avoid procrastination. They are attention oriented. No, that's not it. Who knows what it is? They take action. So are you those traits or are you the naysayer? I happen to be married to the person who is the naysayer. She is not an entrepreneur. Uh, we're in love and she's fantastic. And in fact, it probably helps me that I have someone who will kind of poke holes in my ideas, my entrepreneurial ideas. That's not gonna work. Nah, nah, that'll never work. Well, why not? Well, because you'll just lose your money. This'll happen and you don't know what's gonna happen. So those kind of people shouldn't be entrepreneurs. But they are useful, actually, if you, take the, if you take the criticism, whether it's constructive or not. If you take the criticism and you're still an independent thinker and you say, okay, so they said that I'll lose money. How do I make sure that I don't lose money on this? If you have those traits, then you should be in this class. If you can especially have the passion to see something through to completion, you can be an entrepreneur.